Hey, Daniel Bach here from drumscience.com. We're talking about strength curves and the combinating resistance. Strength curves are uh, changing strength of movement throughout the range of motion of that movement. All right, so for example, in a push up, you're weaker towards the bottom and stronger towards the top. That's an example of a strength curve. All right, um, strength curves are the product of internal and external factors, uh, which influence what we call internal and external torque curves. Okay, let's just talk quickly about some factors that influence strength curves. I'm going to try to uh, just keep things in layman's terms. I'm not trying to teach biomechanics class right now. Um, so external factors, we're looking at uh, gravity, maybe friction in some cases, um, or if you're in a machine, that would, that would make things a little more complicated. But let's look at a simple exercise, the squat. Um, and so gravity is going to be our external force here. So torque at a joint is going to be a product of force and moment arm. Okay, moment arm is just a, a measurement of how much leverage a force has at an at a axis of rotation. Okay, so in this case, gravity is going to be our external force. And gravity is always going to pull straight down and it's going to pull with the same magnitude unless you uh, change mass somehow during the exercise. Okay, so gravity is pretty simple. Uh, what's going to change in a squat is the moment arm or the leverage that gravity has. Okay, so even if you've never taken physics class, you probably understand this concept. Uh, when you're standing straight up, uh, your, your mass is stacked right on top of your knee joint, for example. So gravity doesn't really have any leverage at the knee joint uh, when you're positioned vertically. As you go down and your body segments start to move uh, into more of a horizontal position, gravity gains leverage. Okay, or for you physics people, it gains a moment arm, that perpendicular distance to the axis of rotation. Right? This would be your knee moment arm, this distance would be your hip moment arm. Okay? So that's the general trend uh, with a lot of exercises. Basically, as you get closer to a horizontal position of uh, your, your body segment, gravity is going to gain more leverage because it's going to have a longer moment arm. So the changing moment arms of gravity at different joints is a, a big factor that influences the strength curve in a lot of movements. Okay, now let's uh, think about some internal factors. So internally, our force is going to be muscle tension. Now this is going to be much more complicated because uh, unlike gravity, which stays the same in direction and magnitude, muscle tension is going to change both in direction and magnitude. All right, so a big factor is going to be the changing length of the muscle. When muscles are lengthened, they can produce more tension. All right, so for example, in a squat, as you go down and your quad muscles are lengthened, uh, they're gonna produce more tension. That's gonna give you more uh, torque at the knee joint, okay? Uh, then we also have changing angles of pull, right? So the quads, for example, wrap around the patella, and that gives them a little bit more advantageous um, angle of pull, gives, it, gives them some more torque at the knee joint. Uh, however, as you stand up in a squat, your patella moves through your femoral groove and that actually changes the elevation here a little bit, changes the angle of pull of the quadriceps, okay? And that's actually a, a contributor to the sticking point in a squat, which happens a little bit above parallel, is, uh, is a point where the quads have a poor angle of pull. So we have changing length of the muscle, uh, changing angle of pull, and then there's even some more uh, subtle, smaller factors like uh, change in the orientation of muscle fibers relative to the angle of pull. Okay, uh, I'm not going to be real thorough here. The point is there's a lot of changing factors throughout a movement and those are all happening at all the joints and all the muscles. Okay, so there's uh, a lot of stuff going on and it's better to understand the things conceptually rather than try to calculate things because it, it's too much to calculate. Okay, uh, the point is your strength changes throughout the range of motion of a movement. So every movement has its own strength curve. Uh, but let's talk about some pushing movements. So like squat in the lower body or like any kind of press in the upper body, okay? Uh, the strength curve is going to be generally, you're weaker at the bottom when you're in more flexion and you're stronger at the top when you're in more extension, okay? But it's a little bit more complicated than that uh, if you use full range of motion. So if I'm in a deep squat, and my femurs are actually angled down like this now, uh, gravity is starting to lose leverage, right? Because its moment arm is, sh is uh, shortening. Uh, we're getting away from horizontal. 
plus my quads and my glutes. If I'm sitting down here, I'm gonna be very lengthened, so I'm gonna get a lot of muscle tension down there. So I'm actually gonna have more strength in the bottom of a squat than at parallel, okay? As I go up, I'm gonna get weaker as I get to parallel, uh, be at my weakest a little bit above, and then from there, I'm gonna get much stronger as I uh, stand up. So here's a general model of a strength curve during a pushing movement, okay? Again, in, at the bottom of the movement in full flexion, uh, you're not going to be at your weakest uh, as you go up. You're going to get weaker till you get to your sticking point. Then past your sticking point, you're going to get uh, a lot stronger pretty quickly. All right. So this is going to apply to uh, you know squat, deadlift, uh, any kind of upper body push. Right. So now let's talk about accommodating resistance. Accommodating resistance is an attempt to match the resistance of an exercise to the strength curve. Okay. So uh, what do we do? We use bands and chains to increase resistance as you move into fuller extension, right? So that's gonna take your resistance and it's gonna be more of a linear progression, okay? And it's gonna make your resistance uh, angled up like this so that the resistance goes up as your strength goes up. So just a quick opinion on accommodating resistance. Um, it makes perfect sense, right? It's a good idea. It's a great variation to put into your workouts. Um, however, it doesn't necessarily seem to make any difference, right? Uh, and I think that's because uh, the money in these exercises that we're talking about is really in the, the lower part of the range of motion anyway, and overloading the higher parts more uh, just doesn't seem to really make a difference, okay? But totally cool thing to do. However, what we can't do is assume that bands and chains are always accommodating resistance, okay? Because what if the strength curve doesn't line up with the resistance? So I flip this around now from extension to flexion. Let's talk about a bicep curl. At the bottom, you're in extension, right? And then you're gonna move into flexion. The strength curve of a bicep curl is gonna be higher up here, and then it's gonna trend downwards, and then maybe go up a little bit at the end as we get to the top, right? But now it's the opposite pattern of your accommodating resistance. So this, if you put a, a band or you use chains, on a bicep curl, that resistance is now unaccommodating, right? It's the opposite of accommodating. So let's talk about any upper body pulling movement. You're stronger out here, you're weaker in here. If you use band resistance, you're giving yourself less resistance where you're stronger, more resistance where you're weaker, okay? So it is unaccommodating. What that turns into then is basically just doing an explosive pull out here and then kind of fizzling out here because you're so weak compared to how much resistance you have. Okay, now the same thing applies uh, if you're using band assistance, as in a band assisted pull up, right? A very common thing. You're getting more help at the bottom of the movement where you're stronger, you're getting less as you come to the top. So it really just turns into an explosive pull at the bottom and then sort of fizzling out at the top, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but it may not be the most effective stimulus to get stronger. One more example, the hip thrust. Okay, so let's think about the uh, factors affecting the strength curve. Uh, as you go from the bottom to the top, your torso and your femur are gonna be moving towards horizontal, right? And the weight's sitting right on your waist in the middle. So that means gravity is gonna be gaining more leverage. It's gonna be lengthening the moment arm, okay? So that's gonna make your strength curve go down. Also, uh, as you go up, your glutes and your hamstrings, your, your hip extensors, which you're using to lift your hips, uh, they are shortening. That means they're gonna be able to produce less tension, okay? So again, that's something that's gonna make your strength curve go down. So as you go from the bottom to the top, if we're doing a strength curve, it's gonna have a downward trend, right? So if you put band resistance on this, that's gonna increase the resistance as you go up, okay? So it's gonna be the opposite pattern of your strength that is going to be unaccommodating resistance. So using bands and chains for accommodating resistance is a, a totally cool method to use, uh, but don't just assume that because you're using them, it is accommodating resistance. You have to think about the strength curve of the movement that you're doing. 